Hey everybody, this is Birch. Lots of people continue to kind of write in with uh, imperf- uh, impressions and suggestions one way or another on the uh, the resident Perch troll, uh, Mumbles, um, who uh, apparently has become very polarizing on this uh, channel. Um, a, you know, a handful of people like Mumbles, uh, find the jokes funny. I, I think I'm one of them, or at least I used to be. Um, and it's not that I'm, I find it, un- well, yeah, it's, it's that. It's, I find it unfunny now. It's like the bit is, the bit has taken its course, but I don't find it irritating. But a handful of you are like, you can't rid of, get rid of him. A handful of people are like, you got to get rid of him. Uh, this, this letter writer is very passionate <laughs> about one of those, about one of those perspectives. Uh, let's, let's get, it says, Hey, Perch, just so you know, Mumbles is not a troll. That guy actually wishes you harm and wants your channel dead. You are doing yourself a huge disservice by not taking care of him. I honestly don't get it. SMH. I can't stand acronyms. When did I get this way? I got the, I, I, for some reason, I, in that Danny Lore interview, it's like the acronyms over and over and over. It's like, it's, it's killing me. Uh, anyway, uh, drive me, drive me crazy. SMH. Okay. Uh, I have taken to starting to report Mumble's posts. At some point, YouTube, YouTube will take care of the problem you seem unable to. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, in all seriousness, I'm tired of it. Please take care of this. It's annoying. I don't even look at the comments anymore. Well, then he's doing you a favor because, anyway, ne- never mind. Never mind. I think that the bit is its own bit at this point. It's it's taken on a life um, of its own. I, I don't know. I, do what you got to do, I guess. I, I don't know. Anyway, back to the mail. Sorry. Anyway, my true question is this. What is the best team book that's being produced right now? I read in an interview once that team books didn't sell and that companies were reluctant to do them. The X-Men and the Teen Titans then became some of those popular team books. By the way, the timing doesn't exactly work out there because the Legion of Superheroes outsold Superman for, for a good portion of time, for, for a while. So, I mean, there's team books have had their, their moments. And I'm going to tell you the magic reason or the what what is the magic way that team books have been successful? It's, it's, it's a deep dark industry secret. Are you ready for it? When the creative team was good, the team book sold better. I know this is a weird, this is, I know this is a earth shocking thing and definitely some, uh, I know some publishers right now owe me some money as a royalty just for giving them that, uh, that super important advice. Uh, but there you go. When there's a good creative team, the team books have sold better. Team books have sold better. Anyway, uh, there you go. Uh, okay, X Men Team. That's a team. Um, so, which is your favorite team book right now? Which is the one that you think is doing the best? I'm curious to get your opinion on that. P.S. Fuck Mumbles. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, polarizing. What do you What do you know? Okay. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Um, okay. Favorite team book. Shit. Um, all right. So I, the thing is, I think that, that I've had different moments of team books. Obviously, if you listen to this channel for a long period of time, you know, I did like the Legion of Superheroes back in the day. It's been a long time since I have liked the Legion of Superheroes. You have to go all the way back to the uh, run before the Great Darkness Saga, uh, the five years later bit. I liked the Legion of Superheroes a lot as a comic book during that time period. It was There was some mystery to it. It was some pretty good stuff. But we're back in the 80s now. Um, I've certainly liked the X-Men at different eras. Um, I am not one of the people who uh, felt like the X-Men went to hell when Chris Claremont left. And then for a brief period of time, John Byrne was writing it and Jim Lee was there. And, you know, I I thought that there was a a run there that was pretty powerful that the X-Men did. Uh, I think it descended into kind of some stupidity shortly after that when, you know, the metal was removed from the bones and then uh, Wolverine kind of devolved into a caveman like creature. Like that was the dark of the dark time of the X-Men. Um, you know, the age of apocalypse, I think is, it, you know, was fun. It's a lot less fun that, 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 you know, now that they've kind of gone back to that well and kind of recreated it multiple times and are about to do it again with, uh, sins of sinister. Uh, but anyway, I think the X-Men consistently has been a fun book. So as has the Titans, the, the big ones that have been mentioned, I really like the authority, uh, back when, you know, you had Ellis and you had, you had Miller on it. Um, I thought that that was a pretty fun book doing some different things. What I liked about it, it was doing kind of angry superhero deconstruction, kind of a very different take 
uh, but it wasn't trying to cram it into the current you know universe. It was letting it do its own thing, and and so as a result, I thought it got to be a pretty pretty interesting book. I like Stormwatch a bit before that. I thought Stormwatch was also doing some pretty interesting things before you know we got to um, the Authority. So I think there was there were some runs in there that I think were pretty exciting. Um, overall, I think. You know, going back to Marvel, that, like I said, there's there's been moments where there's been fun things. I mean, there's been Avengers moments. I've talked about the one in the 80s. I thought that, that for a brief period of time, the, the Bendis run of new Avengers and Mighty Avengers was interesting. They were doing some neat stuff. I always felt like after Siege, when they brought them back together, and then he did that weird kind of Ultron storyline, and, and you had kind of... That, that to me, um, was... A, it was just... It was not a great story. That whole, um, when, when he brought him back together, it felt like that was the beginning of Bendis being way too cute with himself of uh, what he could do. And it just, it I don't know, it lost a lot during that era for me. Um, I think that, let's see, other, other kind of time periods. Uh, there's been runs of The Outsiders through the years that I've really enjoyed. I think that that's pretty great. Um, I, what's funny is I, the Justice League, I've struggled. I mean, I think the the just I did enjoy the Grant Morrison Justice League run. Um, you know, you had the White Martians, you had some of that. I, I think I liked parts of that run. Still, it wasn't my favorite. I think Grant Morrison on Doom Patrol uh, was better as, as some of his other stuff. Um, even as I would argue his new X Men run, I liked better than his Justice League run. I'm trying to think if there's a Justice League run I really enjoyed. I mean, there's issues for sure, but in terms of an actual run of a team book, I, I don't know. Um, I realize that I'm, I'm dodging the question a little bit because you said what team books are available, I think, now, um, and I'm giving you a bunch of past stuff. But as, as I go through it, um, the challenge with a lot of team books is that it feels like there's very little investment into the team. And in fact, it feels like uh, people are trying to recreate a little bit of what Bendis did with New Avengers, where it's like the team's got to come together. And so the first issue or two or five or six are going to be kind of this assembling of team members, and there's going to be some surprises in there, like Spider-Man gets to be part of the Avengers. Nobody saw that coming. And Luke Cage is almost going to kind of lead it. That's weird, too. And I think there's a lot of the team books right now are trying to kind of copy that format. They're trying to copy this, uh, you know, it's a surprise team that's coming together, and and isn't that wacky? And so, I mean, there's there's a lot of help in right now. So, you know, for what it's worth. Um, I don't know. So, so anyway, I, that I kind of going back to team dynamics. I like are ones where they're truly playing with the connectivity, the interchange between team members, and where there's kind of a, a, you know an interesting dynamic that is built on you know how do these people that operate one way in a solo book operate differently as a group? I think those are fun things to play with. I think you can you can take on kind of bigger threats. You can use the divide and conquer technique. I mean, there's a lot of different elements. I think you can do with a book like the Justice League and the Avengers and the Titans and the X-Men. Um, it just it just feels like the books are afraid to kind of really play into that. And instead, they're all trying to recapture, or recapture the magic of, of Bendis circa 2008. And that's really what the editorial direction that everybody's being given. So that's, that's what it feels like to me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What team book do you like? Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening. <laughs>